Well, as I mentioned earlier, right now in California, one American is preparing to launch himself into the atmosphere with a homemade rocket. His mission? To prove that the Earth is not round, but actually flat. I know, I know. In the US, conspiracy theorists are becoming increasingly prominent, with even the current president, Donald Trump, questioning the authenticity of his predecessor Barack Obama's birth certificate. The official story, too, about the assassination of John F. Kennedy. Critics say it's all part of a growing movement against the validity of science, from everything on climate change to the moon landing and the shape of the Earth itself. Matt Bevan has been investigating. Prove to me that the Earth is round. I don't mean tell me, I mean show me. It's actually harder than you think it's going to be. You can probably think of 50 ways of explaining how you know the Earth is round, including because it is, or because we've been to space and taken pictures, or because if you go that way for long enough, you'll end up where you started. But just person to person, sitting there in your car or in your kitchen, it's difficult to show me evidence that the Earth is a sphere. That's why it took humans until Magellan and Elcano sailed around the world in the 16th century to practically prove that the Earth is round. Jonathan Webb is RN's science editor. Uh, Jonathan, the Earth is round, right? (laughs) Yes. You and I are standing in a radio studio. Can you, without leaving this room, prove to me that the Earth is round? <laughs> You're quite tall, so can you see the curvature of the Earth from up there? Not, not from up here, no, and not even from from level four in in Ultimo out the window. But that is that's ob- that's obviously probably the most straightforward way to do this. And in these day, this, this day and age when small cameras are pretty cheap, I think lots of school classes actually do this. You stick some sort of camera on a balloon and just let it go, and if it goes up and up and up, eventually you can very much see. The, the curvature of your, the Earth. You turn around and it's curving in, in the other direction. And that's, to me, that's probably the, the simplest thing. That's not the only way of doing it, though. From within this studio, in this DNA age, it's, it's quite easy to call someone on the other side of this world of ours. And it's dark there. And if that's not quite convincing enough, if you think there's some way for some area of a flat Earth to be in sunlight and the other not, then get them to go outside and look at the stars and you have a look at what stars you can see when it is dark And they're completely different. Well, that's why the Southern Cross is called the Southern Cross, because you can only see it from this side of the planet. Exactly. And those sorts of things, I think, are the hardest hardest ones to explain away. An increasingly large number of people don't think the Earth is round, though, or suspect that it might be a flat thing. Here's legendary Ashes cricketer Andrew Freddie Flintoff speaking to the BBC just over a week ago. I am not coming out now saying I think the world is flat. Mm Mm-hmm. But it could be. There's evidence to suggest that the world isn't round. All right, so what does this flat planet look like? Like a disc, not completely flat. It's probably bulbous underneath. In the middle of it is the North Pole. (laughs) Around the outside is the South Pole. Yeah. And that is like a big wall of ice. Take a look at the UN logo. That's kind of what... Uh, the flat earth people think that the earth looks like. Freddie Flintoff isn't the only celebrity to suspect the earth might be flat or at least not a sphere. A couple of NBA basketballers in the US have bought right into the flat earth theory. So has rapper B.O.B. You ever like had a bowl of popcorn? Okay. Um, the bowl was flipped upside down. So it's, it's, uh, it's a semicircle of sorts or a uh, half, half sphere. Like a, like half a dome. Sphere. Yeah, like, like a, a dome. dome. For a year or so, B.O.B. has been in a bit of a fight with astronomer Neil deGrasse Tyson over this, but he still remains unconvinced. In the last year, Google searches for flat Earth information has outweighed searches for other top conspiracy theories like chemtrails, vaccinations and fluoride in water. There's a man in California at the moment by the name of Mike Hughes, who, unsatisfied with Jonathan Webb's camera on a balloon plan, intends to launch himself in a homemade rocket into the sky to see for himself whether the Earth is flat or not. And it won't be his first rocket launch either. When I strapped myself on my rocket in January 2014, I didn't know what the results was going to be. And uh, after taking a 20G landing hit, um, I thought about it for a while if I was going to do it again because it's, uh, it's something scary to do and very dangerous. His parachute failed and he hit the ground very, very hard. So what motivates someone like Mike to disbelieve hundreds of years of evidence of the planet's shape and instead buy into a conspiracy theory that would need to be perpetrated not only by all the world's governments, including North Korea, but also every tech company and space agency, every airline pilot and ship's captain, everyone who's ever been to Antarctica and everyone who's ever flown in a plane from Australia to South America over the South Pole.
Dr. Romeo Votelli is a Canadian practicing psychologist and a writer who has looked at why people buy into conspiracy theories. Well, mainly they get into them as a way of convincing themselves the world is the way they believe it to be. Usually conspiracy theories have an underlying political agenda or an underlying way of believing the things they want to believe about certain minorities, about political groups, about certain religions. People tend to embrace conspiracy theories as a way of convincing yourself they have sort of inside knowledge of how the world really works. Take the JFK assassination, for example. People have blamed all sorts of groups for his death, including the government, the Soviets, the Catholic Church and LBJ. Dr Vitelli says people are more likely to blame a group or entity they are already suspicious of. In the case of the flat earth theory, Dr Vitelli says it's a symptom of people who are suspicious of science. You know, a lot of these people are the same people who question evolution, who believe that vaccines contain poison, or cause autism, who that scientists are lying about climate change and basically a whole backlash against science as a whole, which makes the whole flat earth thing more appealing. It also feeds into certain religious groups, religious beliefs. Dr Vitelli says there's a rise of modern beliefs which go against scientific evidence, from alternative medicines to people who believe climate change is a big hoax. It's easier to believe in a flat earth than it is to be forced to educate yourself about different aspects of science. He also says there's an increasing trend towards two sides of every argument being given equal weighting. They sort of conveyed the impression that all the different opinions are equally valid. It's something the media tend to feed into as well whenever they try to present the idea of a balance. Jonathan Webb says evidence also shows that once people form an opinion about something, it can be very difficult to change their mind. It is very difficult to convince people. And in fact, on on last Sunday's All in the Mind, that was something that that Lynn Malcolm explored, this problem of of, um, deep-set beliefs. Now, look, there are other conspiracy theories around. This is one of the most easily disproved. Would you agree? Yeah. Mike Hughes is still planning to launch his rocket in California any day now to check out whether or not the Earth is flat. Go figure. Matt Bevan with that report, speaking with, amongst others, the RN Science Editor, Jonathan Webb, who you'll be hearing more of here on RN Breakfast in the New Year. You're listening to RN Breakfast. It's 25 past eight.